What's up friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Pam, and today I am gonna take you through a long-awaited update on my outdoor garden. Listen, I know this has been coming for a long time. This quarantine is not producing the efficient filming machine that I was really hoping that it would, um, but that is okay. As we have discussed here on this channel, it is okay to not be doing okay right now or ever, really. Yeah, today, I'm gonna take you through it. I have tons of clips from the last month and a half of just how I've gotten the garden to this point. And from here on, we can kind of pick up in the planting season. It is just into the planting season where I am now. We had a sporadic frost, as I'm sure a lot of you here in the United States did the other day. So now we are nearly into the middle of May and still dealing with frost. It sucks. So in this vlog, I'm gonna take you through the process of digging some more garden beds, getting the first plants in the ground, covering up for the impending frost, and then I will show you how all the plants did. So let's go. Well, these guys have been out here for a few days. It's been really cold. Um, not below freezing cold yet, but pretty close. And tonight we're gonna to get a frost. So I might have to cover these guys up tonight just to be safe. But so far, looking pretty good. These guys were acclimated um, a little less time than these, so you can see they're having a little bit of a harder time. All right, now here's the scary part, is that we check how everything in the hoop house is doing for the first time in a couple days. Well, by golly, it's all still alive. Holy crap. Here's something I've been dying to show you guys. Look what my dad made me. Oh. It has a little drop down leg, so you just turn this to the side and the leg will come down so you can prop it open. And it's got feet that you can shove into the ground so it won't go anywhere. Beautiful. I'm so excited about it. My dad is the best and he is retired now, so he has time to do cool things like that. Okay, we've got a frost coming tonight, about 31 degrees, so I covered this with the row cover. I moved the cold frame over here, and I have all my winter jugs and some odds and ends from under the row house, and then I just left the stuff that I planted here in there, and hopefully it makes it. But that's what we can do, so let's hope it works. The better part about early spring gardening is when there's really crappy weather outside, there's still usually a lot of stuff to be done inside. So today I decided to try to get some plants out from underneath my grow lights and get them into pots that I could then take in and out of the house depending on the weather. So I am putting together a little box full of lettuce greens and kale greens. This is a little planter box that I got at Lowe's or something last year. It actually goes over a banister, so if you're porch gardening, it's very cool. So I will show you what this looks like now. You can see it filled in like crazy. There's some leaves I gotta pluck off there. I think it needs to be uh, fertilized, but it is doing great. I can actually pull that head out soon too. And similarly, I wanted to do a mixed pot full of flowers and a little bit of curly kale because I love putting that in with flowers. It just looks really nice. And once again, I was trying to get some plants out from underneath my light. This has been the battle. It's, you know, the timing of when you start your seeds, when you're growing them, and how fast you can get them outside is always a good time. Um, I, I'm getting a little better at it year by year. And here's the finished product, and I will show you what they look like now. But back to April. So here's where the grow room was at the time. You can see the pots that I had just planted, lots of coleus, tons of flowers, my dahlias, all kinds of stuff. The foxglove was still up here and a lot of my tomatoes and peppers were just starting to pop. So you'll see quite a difference in the grow room now um, compared to then because I've gotten just about all of these with the exception of the tomatoes and peppers planted. 
I admit, no matter how much preparation I did, no matter how much research, no matter how much I was sure that I would be able to weather all of these frosts, I was very nervous throughout all of these storms. There was a ton of frosts in April and we even ended up having some in May, which is ridiculous. So well, everything made it through the frost just fine. Um, I put some cover over this, the row cover that I made the hoop house out of. And I put everything else in the cold frame and everything under the tunnel did fine as well. Oh, we're still hanging in there. Nice out. Keep nice out. Good morning. Left all these out overnight. Everything made it. Hey, don't eat those. Don't eat those. Don't eat those. Excuse me. Some hostas coming back. More hosta. Whole bunch of ditch lilies. Here's my sedum. My friend Brooke gave this to me as well as the sunflowers. I am not entirely positive what was here. I'm gonna have to look back at my pictures because my tags got blown around. You can see all the hosta coming up around my little Buddha. Got some stuff coming up right here, which might be that. That might be something else. I don't really know. I guess we'll find out. So, so far, the chives are hanging in there. And I might have buried the onion bulbs too deep. We'll see. I've got tons of them, so. As much as I want to plant things right now, you know we've got one more little cold snap coming tonight. Oh, my sweet summer child. And tomorrow, so I'm just going to wait. That is a pea shoot. I literally just cleaned this yesterday. So annoying. Hey, mushroom people, which one is this? I love this. I rescued this last year. It was pretty uh, smothered by the horrible bushes, so I cut it up. It's really quite beautiful. It looks like a bonsai. Love that for me. Oh, come on, I 
think that's pretty with the log and the daffodils <laughs> and, the, and the garbage. Oh, God damn it. Oh, right here. Now that, that's a rose bush, right? Here, you can see the rose bush. I cut this thing way back last year because someone told me to do that. So I cut it back um, and this big bush, I think is gonna prevent it from living its best life. Um, so I'm not really sure what we're gonna do about that. We're definitely taking these bushes way down though. Like way down. I'll probably wait till the fall just because um, they'll be really ugly if I don't. But you can see, um, I don't know anything about roses. So I'm gonna learn. And I'm gonna try to save these guys. No! No! Why is it snowing? So the time had come to really put this low tunnel to the test and plant the rest of my annual flowers. I was running out of room in the grow room. I really needed to start some vegetables and I figured oh, it's no point in having this thing if I'm not going to test it out. But despite the cold, little things are still popping up and the flowers did make it through all of the frosts. So this was another day of digging gardens and planting perennials from last year. And uh, yeah, those are some perennials I got from Mike's parents, so I put those in as well. It's always nice to have stuff that comes back every single year, and you don't really have to think about that, especially in these little areas that I'm not super invested in upkeeping, like in front of my ugly shed, for example. Yikes! Hell of a time to have a ripped greenhouse. Hey. Alright. So as you can see, it's real fucking windy out today. Uh, my poor kale. My poor kale is just getting battered. It's been like this all week. Almost lost it. We almost lost it. those trees. So like I said, these are old perennials from last year. I just picked these up at a nursery and they were in my garage over the winter and I had a feeling, my garage, I don't have a garage, what kind of bougie shit do I think this is, in my um, nasty shed. Um, I put them in my nasty shed and they lived all winter. So um, I stuck them in the ground and they're actually doing really well. So I'm pretty excited, especially since everything's closed right now. It just ended up being a way to get some more plants. These are the perennials from Mike's parents. Those are some cone flowers, and they're doing just fine as well. This whole bed is really, really new, and it's probably gonna take a while for things to adjust and grow and for me to get the soil right, but it's been really fun filling it in so far. Here's a blueberry, and I did eventually go get a friend for it because you wanna have two blueberry bushes if you're gonna have blueberries. 
so as the frost just kept on coming i got pretty good at my system of protecting everything it's really just the overnight temperatures that are tough on plants and when you're really close to the ground it's actually a little bit cooler than the forecasted temperature so you want to keep that in mind when you're deciding when you're going to cover up your plants in the springtime it was a lot of work, but I don't regret it because I had a lot of success. And even if that meant going in and out and in and out with plants every single day um, and occasionally losing a couple when I'd fall asleep too early and forget to take them back in, you know, it was worth it. So I know a lot of people are wondering why it is that I even do this. Why do I start seeds indoors? Why not just wait until the weather gets warm and just go get some starts or plant some seeds in the ground? And for me, A, it's really fun. I enjoy doing it. And B, it saves a lot of money. And C, it's really just a matter of getting a big head start on the season. We don't have a very long growing period here in, I'm in 6B, 7A, I'm right on the border. Um, and you know, it, it, I like to try to expand my time growing as much as I possibly can. And this is why you can't take a day off. Damn it. God. For a lot of gardeners, just having this one time of forgetting things and just having to stress about the coming in and coming out is just not worth it for them. And that is totally fine. That's completely fine. Maybe someday I won't feel that it's worth it for me or I'll have a greenhouse and I can start things outdoors. But for now, this was a way for me to start a ton of vegetables and fruit and annuals and flowers. I mean, I have so much stuff to plant in my garden. And with COVID-19, now everything is closed for a lot of people and people have had a really hard time filling up their garden. And I didn't experience any of that. My entire garden has been started from seed and I'm pretty proud of that. The general idea of this big bed is going to be perennials for pollinators and edible, you know, herbs, perennials, stuff like that, but basically perennials. So those are some chives um, that I'm pointing at. And some of those are actually from last year as well. And they overwintered and I popped them in there, but I've just decided that I'm just going to keep with my loose plan of annuals in this bed, in the flower bed, and then perennials and herbs in the big bed in the back. And then I will fill in raise beds for all of my veggies so that's the plan right now i do regret not harvesting a bunch of these dandelions i did intend to but i just didn't get there but for now we can just appreciate how pretty my yard looked i mean it's definitely not like this anymore already a lot of the violets have died off but you can see everything is slowly greening up the hostas are coming in this front bed here i'm trying to work on having mostly perennials in it take some of those lilies out because they are shading out some of my other perennials but you can see stuff just popping up all over the place and I did go back and look at old footage to see what was coming in there so I'm excited to see it come back. Here are some of the sage I started from seed and you can see I've kept up with cleaning up that thyme patch and I'm working on a stone circle for it. I think it looks really pretty over there now. So here's how I've been digging my beds. I would like to do no dig gardening in the future, but for now I needed to do a lot in a short amount of time. So what I would do is rip up the grass, pile that up, dig as far down as I could go, and then throw some of that grass, you know, foliage down into the dirt and then mound everything on top of it. And then that way I was able to add in a lot of soil amendments and also build the beds up a little bit for drainage. So, so far it's working out okay. I am so tired of digging. I definitely think I will be renting a rototiller as soon as it is a little more safe to be out and about and renting things. But uh, yeah, for now it's just good old fashioned manual labor we've been doing. Bring baby, yeah. I don't want to hear shit about my gardening fashion. Your girl is not interested in photo aging. I am also not interested in ticks or getting my hands cut apart by the gobs and gobs of broken glass that is in this dirt for some friggin' reason. <laughs> So 
so here's where I left off that day. I was absolutely beat. I just have a little portion of this garden that I want to till left. You'll see it right here. I'm pointing it out. And uh, I haven't been wanting to do it, so I've been focusing on the annuals. Yeah, the annuals. Um, under that cup is actually a dahlia tuber that I was a little afraid the little sprout would get cold damage, so I stuck a cup over it. But yeah, here's where we're at. Hello. So, I figured today I would finally finish up the garden vlog that I've been trying to finish for weeks now. You can see we've got some action going in the square foot bed and um, everything looks really beautiful. A lot of stuff has gone in the ground this week. Um, everything is flourishing. It's beautiful out. Um, and this weekend they're calling for frost. <laughs> the violets in my lawn continue to be amazing. We're gonna go as long as we can without mowing. They are certainly keeping the resident bunny in my yard very happy when she's not stealing my flower bulbs. Here is the lettuce. The lettuce is looking a lot better. I popped out some sickly looking ones and popped in some better ones. The onions are coming up. All of these crops will be fine with some cool weather. It's not gonna freeze here, um, but probably cover them up anyway. You can see the sugar peas are coming up beautifully. I do have a few carrot sprouts but I may reseed that um, with a little bit of pro mix on top like I did here after the uh, weather happens. It's a trash tumbleweed you just heard. Oh it is chilly out here right now I can see that. So here is the cold frame. I have tons of sprouts in these jugs and I need to start transferring them out after the weather. I got a couple that didn't come up. The Joe Pie weed and a couple of the milkweeds have not shown their faces yet, but I haven't given up hope. And here is the likely ill-fated dahlias. <laughs> I grew these from seed. So really hoping that they're gonna be okay. There's a bulb there. We've got some sweet peas over there and daisies a good chunk of these were cool weather flowers but not all of them so definitely not the dahlias so that's a bummer i may just take this cold frame and slide it over to fit over the dahlias and then i'll bring a lot of this stuff in the house <laughs> this is about as far as i've gotten i have just a little more left to go And here's a bunch of plants that are not going to be happy later. Fuck. Yeah. Worst case, I may lose my nasturtiums. Not really a big deal. They grow super fast from seed. I just started these in the house because, you know, bored. I'm gonna wrap up the blueberries. <sighs> my coleus is probably not going to make it. God, this sucks. Annoying. Annoying. But we will do what we can do. So right now, I am going to sit on this bench and uh, drink my coffee. So since I had to put the row house back up, I wanted to show you guys how I did it because a few of you asked. I have eight pieces of two foot rebar drove into the ground on either side of the bed and that's what I'm slipping these PVC poles over. I put the um, rebar into the ground by hand just because my dirt is very soft and I was able to do that, but you may need a little assistance, a mallet, a, um, a post digger, something like that. So. Um, but for me, I could just slide it in the ground and then slip these PVC poles over it. It was very inexpensive, very easy. I think I put the whole thing together in about a half an hour. And this row cover I got on Amazon. I will try to remember to leave a link in the description box below if you are curious, although I think most of us are out of this season, but it would come in handy in the fall. So you'd be able to extend your growing season with something like this um, similarly as I did here in the spring. So um, this was a whole Benny Hill episode and I wish I could use that music without getting copyright striked because I can't think of anything more perfect than me trying to get this stupid row cover on by myself in the wind.
I started using two long boards on either side to sort of burrito roll the fabric in and then pin them down with cinder blocks and that's worked really well. And then I'm going to take my cold frame and I'm going to move it over and put it over the dahlias and the nasturtiums that were around the dahlias just to give them some protection from the upcoming frost. And I just took everything that was inside of that cold frame into the house for the night. I just covered everything the best I could and I hoped for the best and I will show you guys in the next video how everything made out. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.